the history of the New Testament Christian Church. What is meant by the church? Is it a building? Is it a denomination? When did it start and when will it end? The church defined. The Lord Jesus Christ only twice mentioned the church. Once in connection with how believers should solve their differences. Matthew chapter 18 verse 17. The other time was in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 when he stated, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church is never mentioned in the Bible before this and the next time it is spoken of is in Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And they continuing dead with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Note, the word Pentecost means the 50th day and refers to the Jewish feast celebrated yearly at Jerusalem, the seventh week after the Passover, in grateful recognition of the completed harvest. The word translated as church is the Greek ecclesia, which means a gathering of citizens called out from their homes into some public place, an assembly. In a Christian sense, it means an assembly of Christians gathered for worship in a religious meeting. A church is not a building, it is the people. Wherever they may meet, in the New Testament, we find that the church met in people's houses, in the temple, in the open air, in Jewish synagogues, in a school. From Acts chapter 2, we learn two important facts about the church, when and how it started and what its practices were. The beginning of the church. After the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and just before his ascension, the Lord specifically told his disciples, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry he in the city of Jerusalem until he be endured with power from on high. Following this, Acts chapter 1, verses 12 to 15, describes how 120 believers met together to pray in people's houses. On the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the crucifixion of Christ, the Holy Spirit fell on the assembly of believers. This was the fulfillment of Christ's promise in Luke chapter 24, verse 49 and the beginning of the New Testament church. On this day, the Apostle Peter preached a message to a multitude which had gathered on the streets of Jerusalem, and 3,000 people were converted, baptized, and added to the church. By the end of its first day, the church had 3,120 members. The practices of the church. At the very end of his ministry on earth, before his ascension, Christ left his disciples a specific commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, 
even unto the end of the world. Amen. The practices of most modern day churches bear little, if any, resemblance to those of the New Testament church established by God. The Bible tells us that believers assembled together to one, pray, two, fast, three, preach, four, sing, five, witness, six, provide practical help to one another, seven, baptize, eight, commemorate the Lord's Supper instituted by the Lord himself in Luke chapter 22, verses 14 to 20. The Lord's Supper and Baptism. It is important to note that the Lord's Supper is a memorial of his death on the cross, of the breaking of his body and the shedding of his blood. Its purpose is to picture and proclaim Christ's sacrifice for our sins. It is nothing more or less than this. Baptism as taught and practiced in the New Testament, including the baptism of Christ himself, is always of believers, never infants. In a body of water, the Jordan River, Matthew chapter 3 verse 6, the wilderness of Gaza, Acts chapter 8 verse 26, and verses 36 to 39, a river by the city of Philippi, Acts chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. Its purpose is to picture salvation by faith in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 5. Both the Lord's Supper and baptism are quite simply pictures. The Age of Miracles. Finally, throughout the book of Acts, we read that the apostles and disciples performed many miracles. These miracles all took place at the very beginning of the New Testament church and came to an end with the first century once the church was fully established and the whole Bible completed. These miracles fulfilled the Lord's promise to his disciples. And he said unto them, Go here into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. The word being confirmed is the Bible, which was completed in about 96 AD with the book of Revelation. As God gave his revelation of the New Testament in the first century, he confirmed the word with signs and miracles. The Bible ends with this warning. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. The book of Revelation is the completion of the Bible. So this warning applies both to Revelation itself and to the whole of the Bible. Once God's word was given, completed, and confirmed, the signs and miracles ceased. Whether it was casting out devils, speaking in tongues, surviving bites by deadly snakes, or healing the sick. The growth and spread of the church. When it was established, the New Testament church was entirely 
Jewish. God created the nation of Israel as his special people. The Bible was given by God to Israel. The Old Testament prophets were all Jewish. The Messiah is Jewish. The apostles were all Jewish men. The original members of the church were all Jews. Christianity does not do away with Judaism, but fulfills it. We are warned in Romans chapter 11 that we have been made partakers of Israel's promises of salvation. Verse 17. And should not boast against or despise Israel. Verse 18. Lest we be judged by God. Verse 21. Jesus said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. The book of Acts clearly outlines the growth of the church in a very short period of time, from 120 Jewish believers to over 8,000, then to multitudes. Acts chapter 1, verse 15, 120 believers. Acts chapter 2, verse 41, 3,000 converted. Acts chapter 4, verse 4, 5,000 converted. Acts chapter 5, verse 14, multitudes added to the church. This expansion led to the harsh persecution of believers, instigated by the Jewish religious leaders, and included imprisonment and death. As a result, Christians were scattered throughout the Roman Empire so that the church quickly spread. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hurling men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. These that have turned the world upside down, are come hither also. So, a Pharisee and fanatic Jewish religious leader was converted to Christianity. Acts chapter 9. And renamed Paul. He went from persecuting the church to being appointed of God as the apostle to replace Judas and to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Over a period of about 20 years, Paul made three missionary journeys across the Roman Empire, ending in a Roman prison. He established numerous churches, trained disciples and ministers, and was given God's revelation of his doctrine for the church in the form of many of the New Testament epistles. The last mention of the church in the Bible is in Revelation chapters 2 to 3, then referred to in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. There are seven churches mentioned by name in chapters 2 and 3, which were located geographically in modern-day Turkey. We are currently living in the church age, which started on the day of Pentecost, seven weeks after the death of Christ. We have an opportunity today to become part of God's church by repenting of our sin, asking God's forgiveness, believing on the death burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and asking him to be our Lord and Savior. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The church age will not last forever. It will end with the rapture at the beginning of the last week of Daniel's prophecy and followed by God's judgment on a sinful, unbelieving world. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, 
and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. 